Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture we are going to talk about Apache Spark on Hadoop. So in the previous lecture we have seen what is Hive and we have used Hive to handle the structured data present in the Hadoop and we have executed simple SQL commands to get meaning out of our data. So from this lecture we are going to talk about Apache Spark and why it is so popular nowadays. So Spark is nothing but a open source cluster computing system which will used for processing large data sets and it provides a high level apis in java scala r and python so you can write spark program in any of those languages and it is also an optimized engine which supports general execution graphs but wait a minute we have used map reduce for processing the data right so why we need spark then because in hadoop we have our own core hadoop component which is map reduce for processing the data so why is spark really different than map reduce and why it is used nowadays so the first thing is it can process the data both in real time as well as in batch mode so what it means is spark can handle real time streaming data which comes from social media data so for example it could be the data coming from facebook or twitter feeds or else if you have a sensor which generates data every second so that is not a batch data so it comes under a category of streaming data whose velocity is more than batch data but in map reduce we can only have capability of processing batch data so here by using the spark streaming which we are going to discuss in our subsequent lectures you can deal with real time data as well the second one is and it is very important Apache Spark is so fast way faster than Hadoop so it is 100 times faster in memory and 10 times on disk than Hadoop which is way more fast but in practical as per my knowledge we can get not 100 times but at least 30 to 40 times faster than Hadoop if you are talking about in memory so in memory means if the data resides in random access memory which is way more efficient than storing data on disk So the next point is spark will support multiple languages such as java r scala python which is shows its dynamicity so we can write spark programs in any of those languages so you don't have to have scala knowledge or java knowledge and you can also write simple python program to run your spark code and in this tutorial as well we are going to deal with python only since it is more readable and it's easy for you to getting started with spark and the last one is it can run independently and uses hadoop yarn as a cluster manager so it replaces the map reduce as a processing layer and it can use yarn for resource allocation as well as hdfs for storing the data but spark has its own ecosystem and don't even need hadoop and it can do all the work on its own so spark has its own ecosystem and there are several components and apis which we are going to discuss in the next topic So these are some reason why people are approaching towards Spark and leaving Hadoop. And Hadoop is becoming obsolete and only used for legacy applications. So if you want to become data engineer, you have to learn Apache Spark and it's mandatory nowadays. So now we will discuss where exactly Spark sits on our Hadoop ecosystem. So till now we have got an idea where the Hive resides on top of our core Hadoop services. So here is the Spark and its ecosystem components. So basically, Spark is a good alternative for MapReduce. So Apache Spark is a processing layer which uses YAN and HDFS. So basically, it uses YAN for resource allocation and HDFS for storing the data. And it also has its own components such as graphics, MLlib, streaming, and SQL, which we are going to discuss in the next topic. And we'll get to know what they really are and what they can do. But for basic thing you have to remember that Apache Spark can also run stand alone and also you can use it on our existing Hadoop cluster by utilizing yarn and hdfs core services. So now let's talk about the Apache Spark components. So at its core it has a Spark core API and it is a kernel of Spark which provides an execution platform for all the Spark applications. So whatever the Spark code you are running, it will run through a Spark core API where you will create a Spark context or Spark session. So what are those 
that we are going to see in our subsequent lectures and you can write your code in any of the language and you will have the capability of different APIs for Java, Scala, Python, SQL and R as well. So basically it is nothing but a generalized platform to support a wide array of applications that we are going to discuss. And these are some sub components of Apache Spark. So the first one is Spark SQL which deals with data frame and structured data. So it nothing but enables us to run a SQL queries on top of Spark. So we can process structured data as well as semi-structured data as well. And it also provides capability to work with Hive and give us the advantage of 100 times faster execution than the MapReduce. So if you run Hive queries on top of Spark, it will be way more efficient than converting that HiveQL query to MapReduce. The next component is Spark Streaming. So it enables us to do a interactive and powerful data analysis for streaming data. So streaming data is nothing but the data which is having high velocity and it is live in nature. So basically Twitter feed data, Instagram, Facebook data, so any other social media data as well as the sensor data which is coming from either any of the sensor in your smartphone, in car or a temperature sensor. So these sensors or application will generate data in huge volume and if you have to process it in real time, you have the capability to do that if you are using Apache Spark streaming. The next one is MLlib which is machine learning. So basically Apache Spark will also have capability to do machine learning operations on top of your data and it delivers both efficiencies as well as the high quality algorithms as well. And recently it has become a hottest choice for every data scientist because it gives us the in-memory computation which is nothing but caching the data into memory for faster execution which has way more benefits and you will get that idea when we'll get our hands dirty when writing spark queries and running it on the cluster. And then we have another component which is graphics which is used for graph computation. So for example, if you have a social media data, you will have different profiles of different peoples around the globe. So to find the relationship between two peoples, it will have to do the graph computation. So that was just a simple example to get you a clear idea of what it is. So basically Apache Spark graphics API is nothing but a graph computation engine which is built on top of Spark Core API for processing graph data at scale. So these are some basic components of Apache Spark which will help us to serve a wide array of applications. So now let's discuss how really Spark application works. So basically it has a master slave architecture. So it means that it has the master node which is a driver node and also the slave nodes which are nothing but called as worker nodes. So whenever you write a program and submit it to the Spark it will create a Spark context. So Spark context is nothing but an entry point of every Spark application where the driver will get the metadata and communicates with the cluster manager. So in this case, it will be YAN if you are running Spark on Hadoop. So it will communicate with the YAN to allocate and spread the task in parallel to each and every executor nodes. So executor nothing but resides on a worker node which are slave nodes so that it will divide all the partitions on the worker nodes and we can get benefit of parallel processing of the data. And Spark may able to keep most of the data in memory, which will be way more efficient than reading and writing the data on the disk itself. So it will justify why Spark is way more efficient than MapReduce. So this is how a Spark application work at a very high level. It is not in detail, but it will be enough for you to understand what really happens under the hood. So now let's discuss about some basic features of Apache Spark. So the first one being faster processing. So as we already discussed, it gives us 100 times faster data processing on memory and 10 times faster on disk than Hado, which is way more efficient than the MapReduce, which is a coarse processing service for Hadoop ecosystem. The second one is it does the in-memory computation. So in-memory means it caches the data on random access memory, which is way more efficient than reading and writing it from the disk. So Spark tries to manage 
and keep the data in memory during the different transformation stages so that's why it justifies the faster processing of the spark the next one is real time stream processing so as you already know mapreduce can only process the batch data and it doesn't have any capability of dealing with streaming data but spark will give us the spark streaming api which will which can deal with the live data which comes from social media sensors and so many applications the next feature is lazy evaluation which means if you are doing different transformation on the data it will not calculate it or do its processing for each and every transformation it will only plan it and do all the operation whenever you are giving an action in your spark code so there are different actions such as count to get count of the items the collect which is also a very common operation which returns the entire data frame or rdd so these all we are going to discuss in the next lecture and also there are some different actions such as take top count by value reduce fold and aggregate so until and unless you are calling an action spark will not do anything and just do its planning the next feature is it supports multiple language so it is not mandatory to write your code in scala which is the language in which the spark is originally written in so yes writing your spark code in scala has its own benefits but you can also use python r java to write your spark code which shows its dynamicity and the last one is it is integrated with hadoop so you can use spark in standalone way as it has its own ecosystem but if you already have a hadoop project and if you want to implement spark in it you can use spark as a processing layer in your hadoop ecosystem which sits on top of yarn and gets the resource management from yarn and storage layer from hdfs so it can easily integrate with your existing hadoop ecosystem so those are some features of apache spark so i hope you got a high level idea what is apache spark why we are using it and why every data scientist is mandatorily using it around the globe and also we have seen the basic components of spark how the spark application works in a very simple way and some features at the last so from the next lecture we are going to focus on the major topics such as rdd data frames and how to write a spark application in detail so i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media that have linked in the description below thanks for watching